Hey, welcome back everybody. We're over here at the crank machine. Uh, I got the crankshaft that was in here yesterday welded up the rear main seal area. And uh, be before I welded it, I checked the radius. And we're just taking our diamond here and we're putting a little radius to match the factory radius, which was uh, 60 thousandths. So we just take a gauge like this and see. We put this side in to check it and then this side to check our wheel so we're going to turn that on I got to make a couple more passes get a little coolant flowing I think that might get us where we need to be. All right, when it comes to a stop here, we'll check it. You don't want to have sharp corners anywhere on your crank. Uh, sharp corners are going to lead to cracks and that's not what you want so uh, check your factory radiuses and oh yeah came in perfect on that uh, check your factory radiuses and duplicate them uh, no sharp corners it's uh, it, it, you know it'll just lead to problems so <clears throat> that's one thing I see a lot of times uh, shops will send back a crank and it'll have sharp corners and before you know it it's uh, it's a broken crank so this side isn't really critical we're just doing the rear main uh, just this one side for now I'm dressing we'll uh, we'll just tickle a diamond across the front make that nice and flat and then I'll go get the crankshaft we'll put it in here we'll indicate it again and we'll start grinding that rear main Okay guys, we're getting the crank dialed in. When you dial a, a crank in, uh, don't go off a worn main. Go right off your where your timing gear sits and your rear main seal. Now we can't do the rear main seal, so we're going. I, I indicated the rear main seal in before I took it apart, and uh, we'll get back to that side in just a second. I'll show you what I do. Okay guys, on this end. Before I took the crank out and I had it indicated in the first time, I indicated the rear main. Now we're just checking it. Uh, you know, and it's it's within a half a thou. Uh, you know, we'll just spin that over. And, and like I say, it's in within a half a thou, so I'm cool with that. Um, so the reason you go off your, your timing and your rear main is uh, you want everything to be concentric with those two surfaces you don't want your rear main out of whack otherwise it's going to leak and whether you have timing gears or a timing chain uh, you don't want those getting tighter or looser if uh, your your whole entire grind is off if you indicate off a worn out main um, your timing surface might not be true so indicate off your timing surface and when you don't have to uh, weld up a rear main, indicate off your rear main. You'll be leak free that way. Um, I've seen shops just kind of chuck them in there, um, go off the center main, and next thing you know, you got a worn out um, seal because it's, it's a couple thousands off and it's just tearing the seal up. And uh, your timing chain is slopping. So take the time to set it up right. And indicate off the correct spots and uh, you'll have a good engine that way so I'm gonna get set up uh, bring the grinding wheel in and just go easy and and get that down to size we're shooting for 2 inch 310 
Uh, in the past, you know, I, I, I used to have to make those bigger, but uh, the best gasket company did fix the gaskets and they fit a factory crankshaft and that rear main seal surface is 2 inch 310. So that's what we're going to shoot for and uh, we'll see how it cleans up and we'll start grinding. Alright guys, we're just sneaking up on this. Little by little, taking light cuts. And we'll get the weld cleaned up and then take a measurement and see where we're at. Okay guys, we just got all the weld cleaned up. I hope you can see that alright. Okay, the seal surface right now is at 3 inch Nope, 2 inch 321. Sorry about that. 2 inch 321. And we want 2 inch 310. So I'm going to tickle a little bit more with the wheel. Probably get it down to 11. And then we'll start polishing this area with the belt polisher. So um, <clears throat> we know everything is cleaned up now. And we just got to take a little more material off. We'll go at that real easy. Because uh, we don't want to go under 2 inch 310. So... The finish looks real good. I'm real happy with the wheel, and uh, we'll just keep after it. Okay guys, we're going to start the polishing process. I want that to be a nice smooth surface. Uh, the grind came out real good. You could, you could get away with just that, but I'm going to polish it up nice. I like to uh, make the rear main seal uh, super fine. So we'll take the polisher. I got some uh, rouge on a 400 grit belt and uh, we'll give that a All right, we're going to measure that, see where we're at. Two inch, three, ten and a half. <clears throat> I think we might put a uh, finer belt on there. Just take a couple more tenths off it and we'll call that finished. I'll give you a close-up of it when it's done. Okay, guys, here's a look at the finished crank. I think you can see how nice the finish is on everything. Okay, now this crank was in real good shape, like I said, except for the rear main. So I was able to polish up every journal and still stay within spec 
The rear main seal came out perfect. Two inch, three ten and a half. And let's go take a look at some numbers here. Okay, there's the mains. 2.339, 2.334, 2 um, The spec is 2331 to 23341. So well within that. Uh, rod journals. You see, we came in perfect. The spec is uh, 19375 to 19383. So, we are in good shape on everything. The finish is done with 400 grit and a super fine rouge. Uh, I have a couple different um, sanding belt um, rouges. Uh, one, is, one is coarse. It's got some aluminum oxide in it. And one is fine. And it leaves a perfect finish. I think you can see how nice that is. And when we're grinding, uh, the crank is rotating towards us, but the belt is going in that direction. Uh, on a microscopic level, um, you want the crank to be tor turning towards you with the front of the crank over there. So it's going to kind of lay everything down in that direction. Again, we're talking microscopically. You'll never feel it. Uh, and then when the crank is rotating... In the engine, everything is laid down that way and it's rotating again towards us when it's in the engine. So when you start, you got to be conscious of which side you put your snout on so you get the, the final polish going in the right direction. Um, most engines, when you're facing them, uh, turn clockwise. Uh, some marine engines and stuff like that turn counterclockwise. So if, if that was the case, like that Hercules that I have to do, I take the, the front of the crank and I put it on the uh, the tail stock there uh, just to get everything going in the right direction. Again, you're not going to feel it. You're not going to see it. It would have to be under a microscope. But um, anyway, we'll get, we'll get more into that as I do more cranks. But this one came out absolutely perfect. Uh, I'm going to take some time and... Uh, run some brushes through the oil galleys and stuff like that and uh, get this guy cleaned up real good okay guys I'm just gonna try the uh, the new best gasket this, this is the first batch that I got of the new ones so just want to try it on the correct diameter here Yeah, much better than the other one. It's going to be a little squeeze on that. And that's just what we want. So, they did actually fix these. So, you shouldn't have any trouble with your rear main seals anymore. Like when they made the wrong seal. So, good seals are out there. Um, and they work. If you got a, a crank that's factory size, it's going to work out fine for you. Um, now, the good thing about having this machine here is I was able to save this crank at standard size. Now if I send this out to the crank company that I've been using for a long time, they'd immediately taken this down to, you know, 1010. So, um, with them taking forever to get cranks done and stuff, you know, six months or more to get, get a crank back from them, I'm glad uh, that I cut ties with them and I'm doing my own cranks now. And, and like I say, this would have never been saved at standard. And you see how nice the, the journals are. They polished up perfectly. They're well within spec. And uh, just another thing why you got to do everything yourself. So um, this crank worked out good. I've got plenty more to do. I have one already for um, uh, Larry's engine that I ground. I, I thought I was filming it, but the battery was dead. Uh, but, but we'll do another one start to finish. Um, today, I just wanted to concentrate on the, the rear main seal area. And you see how nice that came out. And uh, <clears throat> these cranks are forged. That's why they weld up so easily. Um, you really need a, <clears throat> a submerged arc uh, or a real crank machine or something or, or some way to get a submerged arc weld on there if you're doing cast iron.
but these forge cranks and all the L's and the F heads and stuff weld up beautifully. Uh, I TIG welded that. I didn't show it because I didn't want to hear grief from everybody saying you can't weld a crank. Uh, these are fine to weld and grind like this, and you see the results. So that's all I have for you today. Uh, thanks for watching. Catch you on the next one.